what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be going over the five armies you should focus on as a free-to-play player now the way i want to do this video is starting from a brand new account what commanders you should be focusing on and then i want to talk about the late game at the end when you have five armies and you can focus on specific troop types and things like that i want to talk about the five armies that i think would be some of the best armies you could have as a free to play player at that point but it is worth noting that commanders do not exist in a vacuum and so uh just because i'm recommending these specific pairings doesn't mean that there are plenty of different combinations that you can do with some of the commanders that i'm going to talk about later in the video one of the things that makes some commanders super good compared to others is their versatility right they're good in multiple scenarios and for that reason it's more worth investing in them than somebody who does one specific thing very well a good example of this is pelagius versus belisarius right i would think most players would agree that pelagius is a more powerful commander in general than Belisarius, but that doesn't mean that when you need speed on the battlefield, that Pelagius is your best choice, right? Obviously, in that case, you would rather want a Belisarius primary. So in my opinion, I think there are some commanders that in general will rise up above others, but that doesn't mean that there are other combinations and other commanders that are better in certain specific instances. So I'll try to cover that in the video, but just keep in mind that this is a very general overview just to give new players an idea of kind of what to focus on right because there's so many commanders so many buildings so much research so many things that you have to do in this game in order to kind of optimize your city and to really know that you're focusing on things that are really going to matter in the long term so with that being said let's just jump right into it if you guys just started your account and your account is only a couple of weeks old um, i'm gonna go ahead and recommend that you focus on Boudica primary with joan of arc secondary and Sun Tzu primary with really any skill damage commander as the secondary, but I would prefer it be Pelagius. Now, the reason for these two armies is simple. Um, Boudica is a great commander for the early game because she doesn't care what troop type you have. And in the beginning of the game, you're not going to be able to focus on a specific troop type very early on. You're really going to have to mix up your armies in total and you know, Boudica and Joan of Arc really just are a great combination for universal commanders in general. And then Sun Tzu is an incredible commander that you're really going to get a ton of use out of even in late game. Um, and the reason that I recommend Pelagius is not because they have synergy, right? Because they really don't. I mean, Pelagius cares mostly about cavalry. Um, but the reason that you're building this army is with the knowledge that it's probably going to be a mixed or a uh, mixed army in the early game. And so you're not really going to get the specific stat buffs um from these individual commanders too heavily right um but you will get nice skill damage from sun tzu and pelagius and also pelagius will do some rage regeneration for sun tzu and there's a lot of cool stuff going on in between them so again i know that they're focused on different troop types but again in the beginning of the game when your account is only a, a couple of weeks old um these four commanders i think are the best ones that you should be focusing on um i think Boudica is one that if you're going to be focusing on her um and you know ideally it would be cool if you actually started with Boudica because then you're going to get sculptures of her for free just by going through the main quest um but i would recommend maximizing her first two skills so bring her to five five one one and then at that point i would start putting your universals into joan of arc um the reason is because her first first two skills are incredible and also her expertise is better than Boudica's expertise in my opinion um and also you're going to be using her as a gatherer and again she is a universal support commander she's really great at that point i would then focus on expertising uh, sun tzu because his expertise is incredible he also does crazy skill damage he's going to be great on your wall and for the re those reasons i think he is just super super good so again as a recap get Boudicca to 5511 then i would personally expertise either joan of arc or sun tzu um i think joan of arc is going to be just a maybe a little bit better in the early game because again mixed army you're probably not going to be doing that much fighting so having her leveled up and gathering like crazy is probably better than having sun tzu sit on the bench waiting to fight somebody um but either one that you pick is totally fine if you decided and this is again you know this video is mainly focused on free to play but the, it will apply heavily to low spenders as well 
so if you decided to go ahead and get minamoto um i would recommend instead doing Boudica with joan sun tzu with minamoto right because i just think that he in the early game he's just by default going to be your best commander because he's the first legendary that you're going to have um and i think that's just a great option for the very 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 early game now at this point who should you have on your wall i think you should have sun tzu primary with whoever your strongest commander is as your secondary because in the early game the wall is not something that you should really be focusing on hopefully you're not fighting too many players hopefully you're not at risk of getting attacked but by having sun tzu and a strong commander on your wall it will be a deterrent hopefully from other players attacking you specifically players who are around your power level um you'll really have an advantage on them by having a somewhat decent garrison um with that being said those are the two uh army compositions that i would focus on in the very 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 early game um because those commanders i think stand out in the epic tier and you're going to use them throughout the rest of the game so you might as well focus on them early on once you enter into the mid game where your account is maybe a couple million power maybe 10 million power something around there um i would recommend focusing on sun tzu primary with Boudica secondary right the reason that Boudica was primary before is because she's naturally going to be a higher level because she's going to be your first peacekeeper so she's going to be fighting a lot more barbarians than maybe some of your other commanders but in this instance you've had time to level up your sun tzu and i think he's a better primary commander than Boudica because he has the skill tree with the infantry tree so regardless I think Sun Tzu primary with Boudica secondary is a great mid game option the reason for this is because they still have decent synergy they can still be a mixed army if that's something that you're still dealing with they both do nice skill damage they both have rage regeneration they do have a lot of synergy in terms of their skills together um, ideally you would want more infantry in this army than anything else uh, because Sun Tzu does kind of care about infantry a little bit plus you maybe have started to invest in the infantry tree with him um, so that's the first army the second one is going to be pelagius primary with by bars secondary or if you have minamoto um hopefully he's five five one one or maybe five one 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 or better um that's what i would recommend as your second army of, of course you would want this to be a full cavalry army so in the mid game i think uh the the best troop type to focus on is cavalry because they are the fastest on the battlefield so you have a higher chance of running away from players that might be stronger than you um and you will have minamoto potentially as an option which will be your most powerful commander because he is a legendary commander in the early game so again second army that i would focus on in that mid game would be um pelagius primary with either by bar secondary or minamoto secondary if you have him and the third army that i would focus on would be another mixed army um which would be scipio primary with joan of arc secondary the reason that this is a really great combo in the early game is because again um it doesn't really uh, matter what troops that you put into this army so for example you could do a sun tzu primary Boudicca secondary full infantry march then you could do a plagius primary by bars secondary full cavalry march and then the scipio joan arc you can fill whatever you have left so probably all your archers and then whatever uh, infantry you have left whatever um cavalry you have left you just throw all that into scipio and joan of arc and what you now have is a mixed army that doesn't care that it's a mixed army and also one that is a little bit more tanky than your other armies on the battlefield and you're bringing joan of arc because she's an incredibly good support commander if you guys aren't sure why joan of arc is so good i just made a video about her make sure you go and check that out after this one because it's really good to know what she does why she's so good because she's not really the best dps but she is incredibly useful to have especially in the mid game i know a lot of players uh talk down on scipio right but in the mid game i do think he's an incredibly good option because again you don't need a specific troop type for him at this point i do still recommend having sun tzu with your strongest commander on the garrison again this is simply a deterrent ultimately you do not want to be attacked by anybody um but sun tzu is going to be just a great option for your garrison and then your strongest commander at this point would probably be minamoto if you have him if not it'll probably be Boudica or pelagius 
that's what I would ideally recommend for your garrison at that point. So hopefully by this point in mid game, you have an expertise Sun Tzu, an expertise Pelagius, an expertise Joan of Arc. That would be um, amazing. After that, um, I would focus on probably buy bars and Scipio because those are going to be two great options that you'll probably continue to use for a while. Um, and then finally, maybe consider uh, starting to focus on some of the um, uh, archer commanders right because we haven't really talked too much about archers as of yet but that does bring me to the late game so this is where you're maybe 20 million power maybe a little bit farther along what five armies should you be focusing on right and i say five armies because at this point you should uh be pretty close if not uh completely finished with getting all five armies from leveling up your city hall if you guys don't know how to get more armies you can take a look at your city hall here um, you will get five armies at city hall 22 so this is city hall 22 and later um, but uh, ideally it's going to be for most of you for a while these are the five armies that you're going to be uh, going to probably want to be focusing on and then after this i'll talk about some of the reach goals like some of the ones some of the armies uh, that you ideally would love to have right but for now let's talk about late game when you have five armies what should you be focusing on well the first um the first pairing that i would recommend is sun tzu with ethel fled um, this is the first time we're talking about ethel fled in this video not because she's someone that you should focus on late but because she's not somebody that you really can focus on much earlier on right because you only can get ethel fled from the um from the metal store in the expedition and the problem with this is that she's 1500 medals uh and you can only buy three of her a day so as in the early game, you may struggle to get very far in the expedition. Um, this is where Sun Tzu is going to come in handy, right? Because he's very powerful. But you might, in the early game, struggle to collect sculptures of her. And so it's going to be difficult to really focus on her um, that that long, right? And so at the late game part of this video, at, at that point, you should be able to get at least three sculptures of her every single day. And you really want to focus on expertising her as fast as possible in the late game because she is a great commander um she's not the best legendary right but she is a legendary for a reason she is very great at supporting and debuffing armies she does have some aoe she's got decent damage for a mixed uh a mixed army which is going to be great and she has really great synergy with sun tzu because of the aoe that she brings the debuffing everything like that so sun tzu primary ethel fled secondary this can be a mixed army um it, it, it is actually better to be in a mixed army because of ethel fleds uh, i think expertise i think is what it is um where she actually no i think it's her fourth skill yeah her fourth skill actually um when she has a mixed army of three at least three troop types damaging is increased by 20 percent. that's a great buff to have so ideally you would want this to be a mixed army maybe slightly infantry justified because of sun tzu's health buff to them and because then they'll last maybe a little bit longer on the battlefield so that's something to consider this second army that I would focus on is going to continue focusing on that Pelagius by bars March or Pelagius Minamoto. Now, at this point, you may be saying, why don't we have Minamoto as primary? Um, you could. The only downside is that Minamoto takes more experience to get to level 50 or I'm sorry, 60 than Pelagius. And if you look, they actually have the same skill trees. So you have the cavalry and skill tree, which is what you're really going to be focusing on. And Pelagius also has the cavalry skill tree. They're identical. It doesn't matter that there are uh, different rarities. The talent trees are the same. So it'll actually take you less experience to get Pelagius to 60 than it will take to get Minamoto to 60. And uh, you will see no difference in that army composition because the talent trees are identical. It may be the case that, you know, you eventually want to replace Pelagius um, if you have access to Minamoto and Cao Cao, which we'll talk about later. And in that instance, then you will want to start probably working on a Minamoto. But for now, um, assuming you're free to play, uh, then Pelagius primaries, uh, Pelagius primary, Bybar secondary. Hopefully they're both expertise at this point or getting close to it. Um, really great full cavalry march here is going to be a great option for you. The next army that I would focus on would be a Herman primary, Kusunoki secondary. Um, again, it doesn't matter which one's primary and which one is secondary, but I did do a video talking about the best archer commanders in rise of kingdoms for free to play players if you haven't seen that go and check it out it'll explain why i prefer herman primary even though it technically doesn't matter um i just think that he's he's slightly more versatile in in a couple of different instances primarily with el cid um 
but later in this video i'm actually going to recommend a kusunoki primary for a different build so it really depends um if you plan on getting isong Ye, then you may want to do a kusunoki primary herman secondary until you get isong Ye to a usable a usable level um if you're not planning on getting isong Ye, then um i would consider it but if you're not going to probably a herman primary kusunoki secondary the fourth march that i'm going to talk about is again Scipio joan at this point obviously they should both be expertise um this will still provide you with a a mixed army option that is a little bit tanky and also will provide the support of joan of arc in the battlefield i don't really have to talk about this again it's the same reason why we recommended it for the mid game except now you'll have probably hopefully uh, t4 troops and you know you can get a, a bit more use out of joan of arc because the rest of your armies will be more powerful and there's more of them on the battlefield to begin with the fifth march is the one that i'm probably least confident in with recommending to you guys um but it will be a ulji mundok primary with boudicca secondary um the reason that boudicca secondary is really for no other reason than because i don't really have a good option for that secondary slot for free to play players um we'll talk about uh what you should be replacing this with in a second but in general i think this is a decent free to play uh city hall 22 early t4 commander or early t4 player build the reason again you don't have um the, the other infantry commander in the epic tier is sun tzu and i think he's just better used with ethel fled in a mixed army than he is with ulji mundak in a full infantry army now remember what i said in the beginning of this video there are instances where these commander pairings are not the end all be all best option right there may be an instance where you need a full infantry army that is as strong as possible and in this instance you may want to do an ulji primary sun tzu secondary or vice versa right um you you probably want ulji primary because his debuff is only for two seconds and that means that you'll have the opportunity to have sun tzu hit them with his skill attack in that two seconds whereas if you flip them around ulji's debuff is going to happen after sun tzu's skill attack has already gone off so you kind of miss that opportunity um so you probably want ulji primary sun tzu secondary but again um in most cases i would assume in a field fight open field pvp scenario you probably will rather want sun tzu to be with ethel fled and for that reason it kind of forces us to have ulji with somebody else um you could do Scipio if you wanted a full uh super tanky army because he is more tanky than Boudica. but in general right in general there's really not that many good options here i don't think that osman is a good pairing with ulji because he really wants a really great rage engine and ulji does not have the skill tree unfortunately and that leaves you with literally no other option because you're using kusunoki and herman already you're using uh Scipio and joan already you're using by bars and plagius already and so really your only other reasonable option would be Boudica, and she's not that bad right she's actually not that bad in a full infantry march because this skill attack will hit during uh or it should it should hit during ulji's two second defense debuff from his active skill it's a pretty decent single target damage factor it also will debuff their attack which is great she also has uh some rage regeneration right here which is nice because ulji doesn't have any she also has some healing factor which will make your infantry a little bit more bulky she does have the chance of increasing damage dealt which is nice because ulji also has the chance of increases his troops damage so you know there's a little bit of synergy there as well but again this is the the army that i'm least confident in but there is reasoning behind it um primarily because it's really all you have left but also there is synergy there right there is certainly some synergy there for a full infantry army with ulji primary Boudicca secondary now at this point who should be on your wall well you should have a, a decent amount of expertise legendary uh, i'm sorry decent amount of expertise epic commanders at this point if you do i would recommend having a kusunoki primary on your garrison with sun tzu secondary um i also have a garrison video if you guys have not seen my garrison video i would recommend checking that out it explains why i picked kusunoki for the primary and sun tzu secondary whereas throughout the rest of this video i've been talking about sun tzu primary up until this point but i do think that in terms of your overall commander collection it's probably better to build kusunoki for the garrison than sun tzu 
because again, he's probably better in the open field with Ethel Fled. And with that re for that reason, it's probably better to build him full skill tree. And at that point, you're going to be missing out on some garrison talents that are pretty key for your wall. So go ahead and check out that video if you haven't seen that about my garrison guide. But at this point, late game, when you have five armies, you probably want Kusunoki primary, Sun Tzu secondary on your wall. Now, with all that being said, I'm going to talk about five armies that you should probably um, start to focus on uh, in the late game and hopefully you will obtain these and as a free to play it's going to be a little bit difficult because I'm going to be starting to talk about uh, some legendaries right and these are mostly legendaries that you you could get as a free to play player. Um, now the first army and this is your late game goal armies like these are armies that you're gonna have to start to really focus on late game and 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 strive to obtain these armies right they're not going to be that easy it's going to require some luck from the gold keys um it's going to require that hopefully you have spun some of the wheels or at least summoned those commanders so you can start to put some universal heads into them with that being said the first uh late game army is actually the same thing as before sun tzu and ethel fled i think even late game when you're strong when you're try, uh, striving to build um the ideal five marches i still think that this is a great combo so you don't have to worry about this um if your sun tzu maybe is an expertise at this point then go ahead and expertise him get him to level 60 whatever um hopefully at this point you realize the usefulness of sun tzu right so we don't have to talk about that we already mentioned it the next is a pelagius Cao Cao combo um, this is obviously assuming that you don't have Minamoto right now, Cao Cao, you would ideally want him to be five, one, three, one. It doesn't actually matter what his second skill is at. It could be five, five, three, one, and he'll still deal the same amount of damage to other players. But ideally you would want to max his first skill, then take him to four stars, um, unlock all of his skills, and then start to put the rest of your heads into him. And hopefully it will land at five one three one or five one two two even or something along those lines right that's ideal the reason that for this is that um one if you don't have minamoto this is the point where Cao Cao starts to be on equal ground or maybe a little bit better than by bars he doesn't have the aoe slowdown that by bars has but he does have a single target damage factor that is higher and he has an attack debuff which is awesome so i do think that at this point when he's 5131 he has the same attack buff as by bars but has a better active skill has a uh, a little bit of healing factor as well and for that reason he's better now if you have minamoto this army changes to a minamoto primary south south secondary still 5131 um this will do way more single target damage than pelagius it won't have the healing factor of pelagius or the rage regeneration of pelagius but the amount of damage that you're going to be doing to one target is going to just be way higher and so that's what i would recommend so if you have it minamoto primary Cao Cao secondary if not pelagius primary Cao Cao secondary assuming that your uh, your Cao Cao is 5131 or better the third army is going to be a kusunoki primary Isongye secondary full archer build. Now, prior to this, the Pelagius army, full cav, obviously, the Sun Tzu army, mixed troops because of Ethel Fled. This is a full archer build with, again, Kusunoki primary, Isongye secondary. The, the moment with which you will probably want to replace Herman is when your Isongye is 5511 or better. Um, that's honestly just you know you have the crazy aoe with he song a's primary but his secondary his second skill um has a 10 percent chance to just double archer attack i think it's for like one two seconds maybe or one turn something like that it's not that long but it's straight up doubling it yeah this is three it's actually three seconds wow and it grants you a 100 rage which is awesome so at this point with he song a at 5511 i do think he's better than an expertise herman and he also has the synergy with kusunoki of being an aoe archer commander the reason that we picked kusunoki for this is because his third skill gives him 15 percent archer buffs whereas herman only gives you a 10 percent buff to to uh attack and a 10 percent buff to march speed and the march speed is nice but it's not actually going to change your dps or your survivability or anything like that so it's literally 10% worth of battle stats versus 30% of battle stats here. And 
I just think that's a better option. Plus he's got the, um, AOE, which I think is great. So that's the third army, full archer, Kusunoki, expertise, primary, Isongai secondary, five of one or better. The fourth army is going to be a Richard primary, at least five, five, one, one. In a perfect world, you would want him to be five, 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 one. But at that point, we're talking about a ton of sculptures, right? Five, five, one, one Richard with a Joan of Arc secondary. And so Richard here is replacing Scipio because he is just, uh, in my opinion, a better commander at five, five, one, one. Um, if you look at Scipio's last two skills, they aren't, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm looking at Richard. If you look at Scipio's last two skills, they're not that great for the open field. Conqueror of Africa literally doesn't matter in the open field. And genuine aristocracy, um, sorry, aristocracy, uh, this increases your troop capacity, which is nice, but I still think that a 5511 Richard is probably better because huge healing factor, really great damage reduction. You also are in reducing the damage that you're taking. You're also increasing counterattack uh, damage, which is great. And then you do have uh, at one here, you have a 10% infantry bonus, which is okay. And then you also have a 10% healing effect enhancement, which is great. For this build, you could do a mixed army. Um, it probably will be better to do a full infantry because that will make Richard more tanky because he does have access to the um, he does have access to the infantry tree plus the 10% of stats he'll give you with his third skill. So he's probably better full infantry with Joan of Arc secondary. The reason for this build is well, for one to have a full infantry march out on the field, which will be great, but also to have Joan of Arc survive as long as possible to constantly be buffing you and your allies, which is awesome. Um, again, if you haven't seen my video about Joan, go check it out. And the final march that I want to talk about is a Ulji Mundok primary with Charles Martel secondary. So replacing Boudica, um, at five, five, one, one. So what this will do is you'll have a Charles Martel with a really nice shield, really nice direct, uh, um, really nice damage bonus. You're also going to have 30% of infantry stat buffs. This actually doesn't matter if it's at one because he's not on your wall. And then you'll also have an extra 10% counterattack damage. Hopefully if you get lucky and you keep getting him from gold keys, it will all go in this final skill. That's preferable uh honestly this is also going to be a full infantry march the reason for this is obviously because ulji mundok has the infantry tree um he also has the attack tree which deals more damage in the open field than the defense tree that martel has and for that reason he's probably better as a primary in this instance and that's really what you should be focusing on now again these five armies are things that you should be focusing on and their viability to a free-to-play player will depend entirely on how many Tao Tao are you getting uh, out of sheer luck from the gold keys? How many Martell are you getting from sheer luck from the gold keys? Um, it also will depend on, did you summon Richard when he was on the wheel? Did you summon Yi Ye when he was on the wheel? These are really important things to, to know and to focus on. If you're in an older kingdom and you missed those wheels, then I would focus on getting them the next time card king comes around that's another event that lets you uh, kind of retroactively get the commanders on the wheels that you might have missed so those two um uh, those two legendary commanders are the two that i think are the the ones that you should be using your universal heads on and only use Cao Tao and martel when you get enough of their sculptures stri strictly from the gold keys I don't recommend using your universals on those two because Richard and Isong are just better commanders and the more skilled up they are, the better you're, you're going to be. Now it's worth noting that at this point, your armies, um, even though I gave you five builds, they can mix and match flawlessly, right? So for example, you can do a Richard primary Isong a secondary to have a tanky AOE march out on the field, or you could do a Richard primary Charles Martel secondary to have just an ultimate tank in this position. Now at this point, who should your garrison be? Well, probably still Kusunoki Sun Tzu, but, um, it's, it might be better actually to have a Charles Martel primary with a Sun Tzu secondary, um, depending on how powerful your Isong Ye is, you may want to replace, uh, Sun Tzu with Isong cause you'll have an even better AOE. Um, but again, at this point, there's way more ambiguity and there's way more, um, there's way more variables that are in play because you're super late game. The number of commanders that you have will vary greatly from somebody else, 
uh, in a similar power level depending on how many gems you've used what you've used them on where you've been investing your universal legendary commander sculptures if you get that many you know again as, as free to play you might not get that many um however it is possible that late game you could be vip 10 if you've been in a super active alliance the entire time and they're been, they've been buying chests and things like that that is pretty much it for this video um hopefully you guys kind of understand the point of this video these are not the five best mar best armies of all time in the game highest dps highest of this is just to get you guys started so you can start to think about late game like what would late game what would decent late game armies look like right it would be nice to have a sun tzu ethel fled or a pelagius tsao tsao or a kusunoki isong or a richard joan of arc or an ulji martel um, this will give you two full infantry marches, a full archer march, a full cav arch, and then a AOE debuff support army, which will be great. So again, this is not to be put in a box. It's very flexible. Like I mentioned with Richard and, you know, with Martel or with Isong or whatever, there's different combos that you can do. You can do different things on your wall. Um, it just depends on in that late of a game, where are you needed? Um, are you going to be in the open field? Are you going to be doing one-on-ones or is it going to be a big AOE fest? Like at that point, it, it really varies a ton. And so, you know, I just wanted to make this video to give new players an idea of what you should be focusing on. But with, with the understanding that this is like, the game is so complex that you can't say these are the five best armies. Like, unless you are you know spending tens of thousands of dollars a month expertising every single legendary and then doing the math and finding you know what i mean it's just these are the ones that i think you should be focusing on and hopefully you guys understand that if there's any specific thing that you need more clarification on whether it's archers cavalry infantry garrison specific commanders check my command uh check my channel i've probably made a video about uh all of these commanders um if there's not a specific video they're probably talked about in one of the troop type guides so check those out um if you've made it this far into the video hopefully i have earned your like make sure you smash that like button i'll wait go ahead and do it it only takes you a couple seconds not even a second hopefully you've done it all right you did it all right cool thank you guys so much for that it really does help my channel out more than you know um if you're new around here subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a video um all my social media links including my discord and my twitch channel are in the description below i do live stream at least once or twice a week rise of kingdoms i do also uh, have a part of my discord where you can come and ask me questions about rise of kingdoms so make sure to follow me on both of those places as well as my other links in the description comment down below if you have any questions about the things that i talked about in this video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace